What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, college football week three, I'm going to go over the entire slate for you guys. Hopefully help you cash some more tickets. I hope you guys cashed our whiteboard winning free pick last week, Oklahoma State minus seven and the hook. We did still cash the ticket. In fact, I'm three and oh on my whiteboard winning free picks. So definitely subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't yet and drop a like on today's video. If you're looking for my NFL content, I did drop a video just yesterday going over the entire week two NFL slate, every single game. And I had special guest Sean Higgs, one of the best guys in the industry on the channel, going over every game and giving his opinion. So check out that video on my channel if you haven't seen it yet. Before we jump in to college football week three and go over all these games and update the whiteboard with hopefully another winning free pick for you guys. Uh, how did I do last week? I know a lot of people are interested in that. So let's just go over it. Well, let's put this on the screen. So six and two up 1.6 units. Hmm. That's interesting. You went six and two, but you barely even gained. You didn't even gain two units of profit. Okay. Well, let's see what happened here. Baylor against the spread cash a ticket. One unit Northern Illinois against the spread cash the ticket. Iowa state against the spread cash a ticket. These are all one unit plays Arizona state easy sweat free cash uh, cash the ticket. Nebraska against the spread for a two unit play cash the ticket Texas and Nebraska money line parlay sweat free start to finish a four unit play at almost even odds cash the ticket so where does that leave us that makes us up a pile of money a perfect six and oh so what could possibly have gone wrong I'll put them on the screen guys four units a piece Two big money line parlays was destroyed by Kentucky being upset at home as a double digit favorite to a horrible South Carolina team that should have lost to Old Dominion the week prior. Uh, not even 200 total yards of offense for that Kentucky team. I get it. I guess it was a look ahead spot to Georgia, but God damn, South Carolina is not a good team at home minus 10 and a half. We just needed the win. I was looking at Texas. Nebraska and Kentucky at home, who, who on paper just were rock solid money line picks. We made the combination of three, three big four unit money line parlays. So, what would have happened? What would have happened with my profit and my record if Kentucky just simply avoided the upset? We didn't take them laying the big number, we just needed a win. Well, this is what we would have had, guys. We would have had a historic day in college football, we would have been eight and oh up over 16 units of profit. Oh my God, it would have been a historical day. So there's some good and some bad. You know, it was an extremely frustrating way to win money. At the end of the day, we did go six and two in college football last week. We did make a little bit of money, a couple dollars, a um, little bit over, you know, a little under two units. Not so bad for me, about 160 bucks. Um, but guys, I'm dialed in. It's undeniable. It sucks. That that one upset cost us just a pile of money. Uh, it's not the record that counts. It's the money in your bank. That's why unit management and bankroll management is so critical. But we need to understand. I'm dialed in. The whiteboard winner cashed. I about went 8-0 on my picks, minus the upset. 6-2, and two, but those two losses were all from one team. So I guess you could say I went like 6-1. Six and six and one. Look. It's all besides the point. I feel wonderful about college football. I would challenge anybody in the entire world to a head-to-head -head competition right now in college football. I love this week's slate. I love it. I've already given out some picks to the client list. If you guys are interested in knowing what I'm going to actually put my money on this week, get the picks. Danspicks.net. You see it at the bottom of the screen. Link to my website in the description below. $29. You can test the waters for a week. It's going to get you all the college football all my NFL this week. It'll get you some plays next week. A week of picks, less than 30 bucks. I feel dialed in. We're going to have similar results to what you see on the screen right there, just without the big hiccup. So really, really looking forward to this weekend of college football. Really looking forward to just going over the whole slate with you guys today. Hopefully you cash more tickets. We'll get the whiteboard updated. Uh, we're rocking and rolling. I'm also dropping an additional NFL video this week, uh, probably going off tomorrow here at 6 a.m. usual time. I'll update the NFL whiteboard winning pick. So again, double check, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get notified. Uh, if any random videos come out, sometimes I have videos over the weekend. So uh, definitely be subscribed to the channel. Drop a like on today's video. I'm going to help you guys cash some more tickets. 
Again, if you want my picks, link in the description. If you guys have any questions, just leave the comments below. Get you all caught up. I'll go over what happened in my NFL bets in my NFL content. So look for that coming up here next on the channel. Let's get after it. Let me uh, let me adjust this here. Hopefully you guys did good. All the uh, by the way, guys, let me know in the comments how you guys did. Curious to hear uh, what bets you cashed. If anyone hit any big parlays, definitely load up that comment section with how you guys are doing. Let me switch this screen here. I'm actually just going to bring up the the current FanDuel sports book so I can get the uh, the lines in real time. Let me adjust this, and I will do that, and I will do that. Let me come back here. Make sure you guys are good. All right. Good enough. I might adjust some things here in the future, but this will work for now. Arizona State, Texas State. You know, Arizona State, I just cashed a ticket on. Why are they plus one and a half? I think just based on the line, I'd be looking at Texas State. This is a money line pick. Let's look at the money splits. What are we looking at for this one? Is it tricky? Do we have a big public underdog? Public favorites in the modern day sports betting world is not a problem at all. There's enough information out there to where we're all going to be on the right side on some of these picks, but public underdogs alarming. And, um, you know what? It's really not that bad. The money splits are not that bad. In fact, I would say there's a little bit of sharp money on Arizona state. Only 36% of the tickets are on Arizona state. Almost half of the money. There's some sharp action on Arizona state here. 60 and a half points. It's going to be a shootout. High scoring should be one possession game. Maybe who has the ball last will end up winning this one. I guess I'd take the one and a half. If Arizona state's currently the underdog, I don't care which team's the one and a half. I would take as many points as I could get with the underdog in that one. Skip that next game. UNLV, uh, Kansas. I mean, are we ready to lay seven and a half with Kansas? Generally, I like to lay seven and a half, eight and a half, 10 and a half. 14 and a half. I generally like to take the points when it's six and a half or two and a half. They're trap lines. They threw the hook on here to try to get UNLV money coming in. I don't think they're going to have to beg many people. Kansas has been struggling. They're off a loss. My trap game of the week last week was Kansas going down to Illinois was dead on with that one. I don't know, man, if this was in Lawrence, I'd be all over Kansas. I think having their home field, uh, not being their home field this year, Total screw up, man. You got a good roster, a good coach. Why would you adjust the stadium on this particular year? Maybe their plans were set ahead of time in this game. I don't know. This one's so tough. The whole world seems like they're on UNLV. The numbers point to UNLV. I can't do it. I got to have faith that Daniels has a good game. I think there's too much of offensive firepower here. Just buy the half a point. You guys can go to alt spreads. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's available. I'm not logged in right now, so I'm not sure if it'll show me, show you guys. Yeah, alt spread. You go down here, go to FanDuel, go to alt spread, and scroll down. You can take six and a half. How about that? We won't even go with an even seven. Take Kansas minus six and a half at minus 142. That's more than fair in terms of pricing. That's probably what I would do if I was going to bet on that game. Um, let's get back to it here. Arizona, Kansas state, Arizona, man. I want to take them. This is where one of the rare spots where I want to take the seven and a half. Um, I don't know. Kansas state on a week on a, on a Friday night, 8 PM. Oof. That's going to be an environment. I love the quarterback receiver combination of Arizona. Unfortunately, I don't think that's enough. And if, and if Kansas state has some long sustained drives, Arizona's not going to be on the field to score the ball, I don't think. Um, I hate to do it here, but I got to lay the number. And honestly, I'd recommend doing the same thing I just showed you guys. I would just avoid the hook. I'm big into laying the seven and a half, ten and a half. I just told you this five, six, seven, ten times in the same fucking video, like a broken record. But on these games, weekday games, the home teams, they should get it done. Maybe just put a little bit of juice in your payout and get under the number just to uh, – be a little bit safer. Bama, Wisconsin, noon game. We're up to 16 and a half. It was 15 and a half all week. I, I can't remember what it started at. I don't know. The whole world's on Bama. I mean, you go to anybody's prediction video and all these articles, any statistics, all these lines, everything that's going on um, is on Bama. And that's just a little too spooky for me. At 16 and a half, Jesus, man, has Wisconsin fallen off this much? I mean, Milrow? 
Look, I mean, they 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 weren't that good against UCF, USF. I know USF kind of has their number, but 16 and a half. I think we're starting to get to the point where this is just a little out of control. 13, 14, sure, Bama. 16 and a half, maybe even if this gets to a 17. Let's look at the money splits on this one. By the way, look at the total. 49 and a half, not a high total. Generally a better idea to take the underdog, especially a big one, especially Wisconsin. I mean, Madison's going to be rocking and rolling for the game. There are some 15 and a half still out there now that I'm looking at money splits. Yeah, there's th no Wisconsin's the play. I'm sorry. 98% of the money on the money line. So everybody's using Alabama as a parlay piece for their big parlays. Just throwing that minus 820 in their shit just to make a couple extra bucks. Uh, how about the spread? I mean, my God, it's public. 86% of tickets are on Alabama. 87% of the money. Could this be the craziest upset of the week? It's college football. Some big upset's going to happen. Could this be the one? I don't think so, but I do think it's too many points here. I got to take the points with Wisconsin in that one. Memphis, Florida State. I, 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 I got to just pass. My opinion on this is probably worthless. I was on Florida State early in the year. You know, I took them. Uh, I took them in that overseas game, I believe. Um, I think I sprinkled on them even against Boston College, hoping they'd get it right. I just, uh, I don't know here, man. I don't know here, man. I, I know Memphis is a, pub, a, a pretty public underdog. Until I'm proven otherwise, I'd be forced to take Memphis. But uh, yeah, just not not a great feeling on that one. LSU, South Carolina. So I'm seeing a six and a half. I think it was a, a, around a seven with this one. I think weather could come into play with this game. I've been hearing there's could be some pretty bad rain and weather. Uh, that could certainly be an advantage to South Carolina if this thing just turns into just a kind of a nasty, grungy game. I think South Carolina, though, overall, uh, I think this number is where it is because LSU struggled to start the year and South Carolina is over overachieving. I mean, the Kentucky game, they they sucked. They they couldn't move the ball. Their offense wasn't good. They were trash. Kentucky was just that much worse. I mean, beyond bad. I mean, they looked like an FCS school. The quarterback looks like he wasn't even a D1 quarterback. South Carolina, I don't think, is a very good team. They should have lost to Old Dominion. Um, LSU has too much talent here. If the weather is reasonable, I think for once LSU actually can win a big game. I think Brian Kelly can actually win a big game. I'd be laying six and a half with LSU. See if that comes down a little bit more. Maybe even get a little better number on that one. Arkansas State, Michigan. I have no idea. I literally don't know. I, I can't trust Michigan to cover any type of big spread because they have no offense. But at the same time, could this be a complete shutout of Arkansas State? It could be. I got a pass on that one. Small lean of Michigan. No chance I'd bet that. Louisiana Tech, NC State, kind of a similar situation. Uh, no way this is going to be an upset, but my God, three touchdowns. Is NC State worth that? La Tech is trash this year. <sighs> 21 and a hook, boy. Man, 16-17 would be reasonable. 21 and a hook is just a pass. I guess I'd lean with the, with the dog here getting the points, but it's no fun just to cover your eyes and, and, and cross your fingers and hope that they can stick around and keep it within the number. I guess that game could get ugly. Central Michigan, Illinois, Illinois off the big Kansas win, probably a little bit of a letdown spot. They probably win by two touchdowns and the dog covers Cincy, Miami, Ohio, Miami, Ohio's not really a slug, man. That's actually a, uh, that's actually a pretty solid team. Cincy just blew that game to pit. Hard to tell where their mentality is going to be. Do they want to, you know, put together another good game and not take their foot off the gas and actually close and cover this number with ease? Or are they just deflated off screwing that game up to pit? I don't know. could be a little of both. I think I'd be looking at Miami, Ohio, taking the three and a half. Maybe Cincinnati gets out of there with a field goal win. Oklahoma State, Tulsa. Yeah, I, I mean, there's I, I can't I can't lay 19 and a half on the road with Oklahoma State. And that defense, I can't do it, man. I mean, they can lean on Ollie Gordon. Pretty good quarterback. Is it going to be a comfortable win? Yes. 19 and a half on the road against Tulsa? I can't do it. I'd be looking to take in the points. Maybe buy half of a point and take plus 20. North Texas, Texas Tech. Does Texas Tech finally get one right? Boy, they've looked absolutely miserable. Should they be laying nine and a half even in North Texas? I think so. I mean, they should be able to run the ball here, man. Just lean on the running game. I think they can grind out a comfortable win here, maybe by 13 or 14 points. I think I'd lay the points with Texas Tech. Uh, but the money splits here, 
It doesn't look good. Probably a pass. Boston College, Missouri. <sighs> Is this number? I mean, what 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 where's the value in a game like this? This number's accurate. It's right where it should be, just north of two touchdowns. There's no value in this game. I hope it's a good game. Watch this for entertainment. Just enjoy this one. You don't have to bet it. The total's tricky because Missouri can score, but Boston College is just kind of a team that could grind you out. I don't really know. I guess a little bit of a lean to BC catching that many points. But Boston College, ranked 24? Are they one of these kind of colleges where right when they start doing good and they get a, a number next to their name and they're ranked in the top 25 and they have a big opponent, did they just get smashed by a strong SEC program? They absolutely could. Gut feeling says Missouri. Money splits and season performance says too many points. It's a contradiction. Pass, lean to the points, hate it. Coastal Carolina, Temple. I mean, Temple's miserable. Coastal in 17 and a half. I guess you have to lay it. I don't know. Hate the game pass. Dub V, Pittsburgh. Well, a game like this is up to the Mountaineers. Basically, the Mountaineers decide what they want to do. West Virginia should be able to run the ball all over Pitt. Keep Pitt off the field. Pitt can't score because Dub V's chewing up clock. West Virginia's secondary is horrendous. Fairly decent pass rush. Okay backers. Pretty bad. I mean, a couple decent skill guys in the secondary, but it's pretty Swiss cheese back there. Don't really have faith in the defense, but man, these backyard brawl games, they're always just lower scoring kind of nasty games. I think 63 and a half is a little bit too many points, but do you really want to bet an under with a team like West Virginia who can absolutely score with Garrett Green, CJ Donaldson, uh, White? Like these, they got some players, man. West Virginia is going to score in this game. Um, is their defense going to be Swiss cheese? I don't know. I think we're looking at longer, more sustained, disciplined, fundamental football here from, from the Mountaineers. I think they get in, they get out, they win by six, and they win uh, yet again another backyard brawl. They've had kind of Pitt's number over the years. I know that one year it cost them a national championship, uh, but man, one and a half is reasonable. I ain't laying the one and a half. I'd go money line with the Mountaineers, minus 126. Hunt around. You could probably find a better number than that. Notre Dame, Purdue, no idea. I mean, I was against uh, Notre Dame last week. I didn't know it was going to be an upset, but man, I knew it was too many points. Nine and a half against a Purdue team that's kind of, uh, I guess you could say they're in sort of a rebuild mode. They had a nice little stretch there. Purdue, though, man, home field, That generally that's a, that's a place where a lot of teams get upset, man. Uh, the problem is Notre Dame's coming off the loss. I think they can get in there. I think I'd be laying the nine and a half, kind of a trappy number. Um, I think they can get in there and, and, and be focused. I mean, they went on the road, won easily uh, against a and I think I'd lay the points with them over Purdue. Speaking of A&M, laying three and a half on the road. It was four and a half, down to three and a half. I still think it's too much. This is a coin flip game. Who knows who's going to win? The total's at 46 and a half. It should be close. Give me the field goal. Give me Florida and the points, man. I'll take the I'll take the three and a half. Tulane, Oklahoma. I guess you got to go Tulane here. I hope they're not too mentally deflated off that Kansas State uh, near upset. Oklahoma, man. Are, are we sure this is a top 15 team? They're 15th in the country? Boy, I don't know. I know they're going to improve every week, and their defense is actually a little bit better than I expected. Maybe an under in this game. Maybe an under 46 and a half. Boy, that is a low number for an Oklahoma game. My God, we're used to seeing them score that on their own. I'd probably be looking at taking the 13 and a half points with Tulane. They probably get their heart broke by seven to 10 points again. They should be in the game for quite a while. Oregon, Oregon State, no idea. It's a pretty good number on Oregon. I mean, these teams aren't even close in terms of talent. It's just, you know, when's Oregon going to put it together? Mr. Dylan Gabriel. We just talked about Oklahoma. Now we're talking about uh, where he's actually at now. Is he going to put it together here? Back, uh, You know, the, the Civil War here? Oregon, Oregon State? Is this enough to, to rally the troops? Or is Oregon just going to kind of drag their feet through the mud and get out of here with a 10-point win? I don't know. This one's too tough for me to to call. I just don't know what we're going to get, get out of Oregon. Gut feeling says they might, they might crush them. I mean, Oregon state lost so much talent. I'd probably be looking at Oregon minus the points. It's just this extremely square pick, big favorite. 
generally just a bad idea. Another uh, another little rivalry here, not a little one, but I'm just kind of saying that. Washington State, Washington, a four and a half point spread. Give me the points, man. This one, this one should be close. This one should be close. I'll take four and a half with Wazoo. I think they I think they can stay in this game. They might even win the game outright. Ball State, Miami, no clue. Nevada, Minnesota, uh, comfortable, easy win for Minnesota. 17 and a hook. I don't know. Starting to get up there just a little bit too much. Wish this thing was just south of two touchdowns. I would have put a premium bet out on the Minnesota Golden Gophers in this spot. A slight lean to Minnesota still. They should win by 20 plus. I just don't know if that offense has enough horses to be laying big spreads with. Prairie View, Michigan State, no clue. For I mean, <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? Prairie View, Michigan State. Are you guys really betting on this stuff? Don't be betting on this stuff, guys. Use your brain. It's college football. Georgia Tech, kind of a similar game. Another massive spread in a game. Who cares? Pass. Another one. Pass. App State, ECU. I don't know. I don't know. That's probably just a good one to watch, man. That's probably just a good one to watch. App State money line? I'm not sure. Haven't been haven't been paying attention to that too too much. I did say though. I did say though. Told you guys specifically in my live stream on Saturday mornings when we kind of go for our last call and I react to game day and stuff. I told you guys that App State was a wildly public underdog pick against Clemson. I said Clemson was the play, and they got smoked. Maybe they come back here and get in the win column. Troy, Iowa, no idea. It's a down year for Troy. Normally, plus 22.5 with Troy against Iowa would be an absolute home run. Take the points with Troy. The total's at 38.5. I don't know if Troy's going to score. And after having their heart broken, I think we could see a little better effort out of Iowa here. Do they cover 22.5? I don't know. This could be 20-0, to 21-0, and that's it. 23-3. to just going to be a weird game. No way I can bet something like that. UAB, Arkansas. Kind of want to lay the number. Kind of want to lay the number with Arkansas. They might have a decent crowd. It's still early in the season to where all hope isn't lost yet. Maybe they have a decent crowd here on a Saturday afternoon. That might be enough to carry them over the edge. That's a big number, though, for a team that's in a rebuilding mode. Utah, Utah State. Well, let me come back over here. Let me scroll over here, and let me add this here. Utah, Utah State is your whiteboard winning free pick of the week. Let's put it on the board. Utah minus the points is your whiteboard winning free pick. Now this says 20 and a half, but I just did this and there is a 20 out there. Let me double check for you guys right now. And let's look at the money splits while we're doing that. Where are we at? Utah, Utah state scroll, scroll, scroll. There we go. Yeah. There's a 20 on DraftKings right now at minus 110. So Utah minus 20 is the pick. We're looking at 61% of tickets against the spread on the Utah side of things uh, but about three quarters of the money so some sharp action on the spread baylor got a cover we were on baylor last week i like utah here i like them to keep their foot on the gas a little more in this game um i like their defense to show up i mean this could be a shutout i don't know if utah state can score on utah man i really don't know the total's pretty low i think most of those points are going to be utah i see him winning by 24 maybe 27 points in this one i'd be laying the points with utah i know it's a little bit of a rivalry a little bit scary I think it's just kind of a bad year for Utah State. There are some years where I absolutely would be on Utah State here just based on where this game is being played and, and just kind of the long history of, of this particular matchup. But this particular year, and I know the camerizing stuff and I get all that. I think I'd lay the points with Utah on this one. Let's keep scrolling here. Connecticut and Duke. Lay the points. Connecticut's horrendous. I think Duke is uh, pretty bad too, but they should be able to cover a reasonable number around two touchdowns against UConn. UTEP Liberty. Easy, comfortable win for Liberty. Do they cover 23 and a half? I think so. I think so. That's a tough one. FIU, FAU. 
five and a half point spread. This one's tough. I think I'd be going with the home team, though. I think I'd be going with Ford Atlantic here. Better coach, in my opinion. Tough game. Virginia Tech, Old Dominion. This is up to 14 and a half. I think this 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 is where we're going to see some buyback in Old Dominion. I mean, it's a team that coulda, shoulda, woulda beat South Carolina. We don't know how bad South Carolina is yet, but they did beat Kentucky. We all know that. Virginia Tech, man, so much hype on this team coming in, and I know Old Dominion's gotten the better of them in the past. So is it like, are, are they going to come into this game knowing what has happened in recent history and really be focused? They absolutely have the roster to cover 14 and a half against ODU. Uh, I just don't see it, man. I just don't see it. I think it's more of a 10-13 maybe even 14 point win but this is north of two full touchdowns the total's only 48 and a half i know virginia tech is still kind of gelling and they're going to get better every week and they're still low key a dark horse in the acc um maybe even a slight outside chance at the college football playoff uh, if i don't get too crazy here and i don't like virginia tech man i went to west virginia so that's a rivalry i actually went to the game the last time vtech was in morgantown couple years ago but uh yeah i gotta take the points with odu in this one they always just sent they always just seem to kind of give vtech problems it's kind of a bad year for old dominion it's supposedly a great year for virginia tech this could be the game where both of those sides become true these are only free picks but i gotta lean with the points in that one south carolina state georgia southern no thank you gardner web charlotte no thank you no thank you old miss wake forest 22 and a half i don't know man I don't know here. I don't know here. Does Old Miss kind of take their foot off a of gas just a little bit? Is this a 17-point win, 20-point win? Is this a backdoor cover from Wake? God, what an ugly game. I think I'd be leaning taking the points here, but that's scary because in terms of the roster, oh, man, Ole Miss is much bigger, faster, stronger, and, and more talented than Wake. And I mean by a good margin. It just kind of comes up to their mentality. On the road, do they just want to get in, get out, win by 20? Do they get up 30 and then kind of fall asleep? Get a couple late scores by Wake just to get it back under the number? That's a tough game to bet on, man. You guys can find better stuff than that. Uh, what else we got? UTSA in Texas? No, thank you. I'm not betting that. No chance. I don't even have an opinion on that. These games, Vandy, Georgia State. I mean, I don't know about this stuff, guys. Should, should Vandy be laying 10 and a half against anybody? I don't know. Probably not. Probably the points in Georgia State. Jacksonville State, Eastern Michigan. Probably Eastern Michigan money line. Don't love it. South Florida, Southern Miss. Probably USF. Laying the points. But it's a, it's kind of a sketchy spot. Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee. I mean, these games are trash. Georgia, Kentucky. Quite a bit of line movement here, and we see the buyback at 24 and a half. This was a, a 21, 21 and a half. I remember seeing it very specifically for a certain reason. Um, yeah, interesting. I mean, the total's at 45 and a half. So, I mean, Kentucky, man, they didn't even have 200 yards of offense against South Carolina. So this is one of those games where it's like, okay, Georgia, it's up to you. If Georgia really wants to, they can win 45 to zero and almost double the spread. But by week coming up, I think Bam is after that. Are they cool with winning by 17? I don't know, man. I just, I mean, if Kentucky can't even score, I mean, they're, are they, they're probably going to have a zero on the scoreboard. Can Georgia score 20, <laughs> over 24 points? I feel like even a three-quarter effort here gets Georgia covering the 24 and a half. UCF, TCU. I do like UCF in this game, but it's starting to get a little juicy for a road team. Uh, Big 12 game. So if it gets to a field goal, I might consider even putting a little bit of my money on TCU. Right now, minus 130, and I'm sure you could hunt around the other books and probably find like a better price. I'd be looking at UCF. I wouldn't be laying even a single point. I'd be looking at a money line play in this one, unless you're on the underdog. Should just be kind of a back and forth game. Pretty pointsy. 
I mean, teams, these both these teams should be approaching 30 points in this game. I think KJ Jefferson, I think a little bit of a better coach. I mean, the coaching is kind of a kind of an offset. TCU is a pretty good environment. That scares me a little bit. But I think UCF could get up for this one. Maybe a money line play there. Colorado, Colorado State. How is Colorado minus seven and a half to anybody, even a high school team? I mean, these are just such a bunch of drama queen, celebrity, just soft, gutless people. It's just pathetic. I think we're going to see blood start to boil in no more than two more weeks, man. Uh, this program is really going to fall apart, in my opinion. Colorado State, I wish they still were hanging on to a little bit more talent closer to last year's team. But catching seven and a half here? God, I hope how bad is it? How public is it? It's almost scaring me that they're allowing us to bet Colorado State plus seven and a half. I mean, does that not scare you guys? I need I need you to load up the comment section. Is this game scaring you? Because we should all be putting our entire life savings on Colorado State plus the points. Just makes me a little nervous that that's even available. However, one book is at a six and a half, so that makes me feel a little bit better about it. Yeah, it's so public, guys. It's so public. It's so public. 75% of bets against the spread are on Colorado State. 81% of the money, I mean, just a pile of money is on Colorado State. If enough money comes in and gets this down to like a six, a five and a half or a six, and it's not going to go through the key numbers and get that far. I'm smoking crack. Uh, But if I could get a five and a half or a six, I would actually be on the Buffaloes. I would actually bet Colorado. This line should just tell you everything you need to know. The whole world's against Colorado right now. Nebraska last week was my single biggest wager. I mean, I had it in in three different parlays at four units each. And I had to put another two units just on their spread straight up. I mean, I knew that was, that was coming and I should have went harder. I should have went 10 unit, absolute full max play, just a straight bet against the spread. That was the spot, uh, potentially of the year. Now the whole world's on Colorado state. I don't think they just, I just think they're maybe just a bit short on talent. This could be a field goal game going all the way down to the wire, and you get one fluky interception by Travis Hunter. He runs it back, and they they win by 10. I don't know. Something just feels like Colorado's going to focus and, and give us maybe one more decent effort. I like Colorado State in the points. I don't like how public it is. And what I say consistently on this channel, and you guys remember me saying it all season long in college basketball, is being on big public plays is fine. There's enough information. There's people like me on the internet giving my opinion. We can all be on a lot of plays and and and, and everybody cashes their ticket on, on the right side. Usually not on the underdog side. Public underdog, not the spot. Big public favorites when it seems like the whole world's on it, not the end of the world. We see it in the NFL all the time. Still, I got to lean Colorado State. If that's a trap, I'll fall into it. Colorado, don't like the culture. Indiana, UCLA, three and a half point spread. I don't know, man. This one's tough. And these teams are going to have to kind of get used to each other here. UCLA here. UCLA here catching three and a half against Indiana. I think you got to take the points. It just feels a little bit too easy. I think Indiana minus three and a half on the road. That's a pretty strong number from the books. Maybe get really, really juicy with this one and go Indiana on the money line. Minus 150 range. Eastern Illinois, Northwestern, like Northwestern, I don't like a minus 24 and a half in a, in a game where the total's 36 and a half. I guess it could be 30 zip. I'm not betting it. Toledo, Miss State, no, not betting it. No opinion. Northern Iowa, Nebraska, let down spot. Nebraska probably wins by freaking 31 and everyone gets screwed on the spread. Don't be coming back in on Nebraska. Last week was the week to absolutely nuke them. There'll be more spots to get back on that Nebraska team. I like that football team, uh, but this is just situational football. You just can't get on them here. 32 and a half. No, thank you. Um, could they cover it easily and win by 50 and just really Matt rule, really get this place rocking and rolling. Sure. It's absolutely possible. And it wouldn't shock me one bit, uh, but just doing this long enough. This just feels like a 30 or a 31 point win and everyone gets screwed on the spread, man. Seen it before. New Mexico, Auburn, 28 and a half point spread. No idea. New Mexico is absolutely horrendous. 
maybe just simply the SEC program being at home on a Saturday night's enough. That's a lot of points, though. Air Force Baylor. Baylor showed a little bit of grit against Utah despite the final score. Generally pretty competitive, especially in the uh, competitive, especially in the second half of that game. 15 and a half, I think it's reasonable. Head and shoulders, the better team. Coach on the hot seat. He might take advantage of a game that he can run into the ground to run it into the ground. If Baylor gets up comfortable, I expect him just to, just to kind of do some stress relief and uh, you know really flatten Air Force. I think I'd be laying the points with Baylor. Kent State, Tennessee, no idea. Huge spread, not interested. Maryland, Virginia, interesting game. Uh, I don't know, man. This is uh, this is sneaky. I, I look, my gut kind of says Virginia money line, but Maryland's pretty talented. They got better players. I think there's a slight coaching advantage to Maryland. This one just screams uh, Virginia to me. Let's look at money splits for this game real quick. I try to go through the games as thorough as I can, but as quick as I can for you guys, not to take up your entire life, but to get you the information you need to hopefully make better decisions with your own money. Where's the money splits for this one? Here we go. So there is a three and a half out there. Interesting. Yeah, money splits are just like right down the middle. I mean, it's just it's just pretty, yeah. Virginia, a little bit of a, a heavy public underdog. I don't know. I still kind of like Virginia in this spot. I think if you can find a three and a half, you absolutely bet Virginia. You grab that three and a half right now. Rice, Houston. What a weird number. Houston? I mean, competitive against Oklahoma? Pretty talented roster. They're only laying four and a half. Let's look at the money splits from this one. Let's look here. Is this a tricky little spot? If this will load. There's a four out there. DraftKings is an even four. I mean, the Sharps are on rice. It's just a lot of money is on rice. Public underdog, a little bit scary, but the money splits are extreme. We're looking at 50%, a perfect split on the money line. 84% of the money on the money line is on rice for the outright upset. Interesting. I think I'd be taking the four and a half with Rice. That game should be pretty competitive. BYU, Wyoming. Wyoming, man. Some teams uh, that they've had in the past and that place to go and play generally. Getting 10 and a half is a slam dunk. Here, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm still going to lean taking the points in this spot and what should just be kind of an ugly game. Don't love it. San Diego State versus Cal. Eh, I don't know. Comfortable Cal win. Can they cover 18 and a half? No idea. I feel like they're going to win by 13, 14 and just kind of cruise to a comfortable win, kind of maintain that margin throughout the game. New Mexico State, Fresno State, I have no opinion on that. No idea. And uh, that's it. That's it, baby. That is it, guys. Um, let me go ahead and get rid of this. Guys, six and two last week with two plays. My The only thing I got wrong was Kentucky being upset, and we would have won over 16 units. You better believe I'm going for another big weekend just without the hiccup. Danspicks.net, link to my website in the description. Even if you haven't tried it before, guys, what's $30 to know all the bets that I'm going to make over the weekend? I think it's worth your time. Uh, I've been off to a slow start. I had a losing weekend in NFL. Uh, my first weekend in college football was actually a loss, which is always super erratic football, uh, college football week one. But the point is, my long-term numbers in the sport of football are extremely good amongst the best in the industry, but I'm off to a slow start. So you better believe I'm going to be crawling my way all the way back. If you guys jump on board today, you basically get me on an uptrend without the stuff that you had to go through in the beginning of the season. So it's actually a really good time to jump aboard. Of course, that decision's up to you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think of all these games. Uh, again, double-check all the social guys, all the links in the description below. And of course, you can always join the SoBet link in the description below. If you're looking for a more cost-effective option, I'm down a little bit. I'll put it on the screen. I'm uh, three and two, I believe, over my last week, um, down right around a unit. We're going to get rocking and rolling on SoBet. I'm going to put some parlays, some same-game parlays, and some more creative things for fun on that SoBet platform over the weekend. Uh, that's only right around, I think it's like $9.99 right now for the entire month. Now, it's not all my picks. I don't put everything on SoBet, but generally it averages out averages out to a pick a day. Uh, so it's lower volume, but you'll get some of my stuff, but there's 60 other people on that platform 
really good professionals. You can go with the interactive leaderboard, see who's hot, uh, you know, ride the hot hands. Just a lot of people on there. Hundreds and hundreds of bets being placed for you to see on the SoBet platform on a daily basis. You'll have access to that immediately. So consider signing up with the link in the description. I'll see you in the next video.